Hello everybody and welcome to my podcast Unwind and Knit with me. My name is Lisa and I'm coming to you from Christchurch which is in the South Island of New Zealand and this is my little area where I talk about my knitting patterns, yarn and everything knitting related um, that is near and dear to me. Um, so and I like to bring it to you and share it with you so um, I hope you have your knitting, I hope you get sitting back and relaxed and you've got about an hour to spare um, to join me for what is episode 37 and today is Wednesday the 8th of March. So welcome to all um, returning viewers, thank you and if you are a new viewer to my channel um, please subscribe and give it the thumbs up and I hope you enjoy the content. Uh, a couple of um, admin things. You can find me on Facebook and Instagram as Unwind and Knit With Me. And we also have a Facebook community group and that's where you can get on and share your projects. Um, and it's a really neat little space and I really enjoy it because it's where I get to see what you're knitting um, because you get to see everything I'm knitting. So uh, it's a really nice uh, little area. And also you can ask questions um, and there's a lot of people out there that can give you really good advice. So yeah, on all my social network um, platforms, it's quite easy. It's all just unwind to knit with me. So welcome. Um, the first thing I have to address is uh, about 15 hours ago, so 7.30 last night, I posted um, a post on Instagram announcing that I was going to do a birthday or I am doing a birthday giveaway. And I haven't done this before, but March is uh, the month of my birthday, late March. And I had some stock that I wanted to um, put together as a giveaway and I posted it. And then I woke up this morning to be informed by lots of viewers that, um, that there was a scam and I think it's called a bot. And I don't know what a bot is. And I don't know if I've actually been fully hacked or whether um, it's just something that that you get. And what I need to say is please just delete it and block it. Um, I have called my people that I, my IT people um, that I work with um, and I'm waiting for them to get back to me. So I really don't know what it is, but what I need to say is please just block it and delete it. When I draw, when I draw the prize in late March, I will notify you personally and you will know that it's come from me, that it's, um, that it's not a scam. So, um, I, while I'm talking about that prize, I'll share it with you now. So what I'm giving away is four skeins, four skeins of this beautiful yarn. It's called Devonia. It's from the UK and it's 50% Exmoor, um, Blueface, Blueface Lester and Wensydale. It's from the Devon region. And this color is called Wild Damson and it's a stunning color and it's, was part of last year's limited edition range. So this um, this colour will never be repeated. So it's quite unique. So there's four skeins of that, which would is definitely a full uh, sweater quantity. I'm giving away one of my small um, leather, what I call the bucket bags. That's the small one in the tan. And I've also included a set of my stitch on hold cables and also um, one of my knitting balms um, for your hands, hand cream. So that will all be drawn late March and you will be notified by me personally. And um, yeah, and I will send that anywhere in the world to whoever wins. It will be done by a program which randomly generates a winner. And what I've asked, you to do to enter that draw is to just follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Um, and in Instagram, just um, leave a message using the word following, um, follow or following, and that's how we will generate a winner. So thank you to everybody that let me know about this um, bot, <laughs> whatever a bot is. Um, and I'm really sorry if it's, um, caused anyone any distress because 
it really upsets it really has upset me because i wanted to do a giveaway with good faith and to think that there's someone out there that wants to just ruin it all makes me really angry and i think what makes me more angry is these people are never held accountable they just get away with it and i've had a lot of messages saying that it's happened to lots of podcasters i'm not the only one i know it's happened to selma from little big knits because i watch her and also Crab Bay Knits. I think it's also happened to that podcast. So I know I'm not alone. So anyway, that's that. So that's the giveaway. I was going to leave that to the end, but we've covered that off now. I do have an FO to finish to share with you. I have, I think, three new cast-ons and whips, works in progresses. I also have some pattern and yarn ideas um, that could be stash busters I've actually delved a little bit into my stash so um, and the other thing I've got to share with you I thought I've, I've pulled out three garments that I have made in the last couple of years and that I've worn and I thought I'd just give a, a quick recap on them share the pattern with you in case it's something you want to knit um, but also just share with you what I love about it or what I don't love about it um some stash busting and i really hope you hang in and watch me to towards the end i do a shop update because i've got some really exciting new um products some new leather bags and some new colors in some of my yarn ranges and i'm really excited about those um yeah so that's all my ad mini stuff shop update at the end um, another thing that's made me really happy in the last two weeks, I, I really have had um, some highlights in, in the last two weeks. Um, I have had quite a few visit people visit my little shop and I just want to give a shout out to Debbie from Hawke's Bay who um, reached out to me and come and said hello and I met her and her husband and her lovely dog. So thank you. Also Christine from Hamilton, come to see me. Um, Pam from Auckland and um, tomorrow I've got a visitor coming to see me that has been following me and she's from Canada um, and that it makes me really excited because I do open my little shop on Saturdays to people that are here in Christchurch um, but I always open by appointment um, so for anyone else that's passing through or can't make Saturday mornings um, so that's been a real highlight for me just to know that well people people are following me and watching and engaging and um, it's been a real highlight so hello to all you wonderful people that come to say hello from the North Island I've also had a couple of young girls in from Dunedin and that was exciting also to see um, the younger generation um, knitting and buying wool so that was a real highlight for me yes yeah, so what I'm wearing um, I finished this last year it's fairly new but this is the Cavette by Caitlin Hunter that's the pattern there I have done a wee little bit of extra length mine's not as cropped as that one I'll stand up just quickly to show you that's it there lots of bobbles bit of lace work bit of colour work um, and I really like this top I do like wearing it I wish I still had have added just a little bit more length to it um, but it's okay when I wear high-waisted pants like what I've got on today so I really enjoyed that um, and I really enjoy wearing it so that's Cavat by Caitlin Hunter I knitted that in um, yarn Adalic which is one of the yarns I stock here the colour, the main colour I did mine in was one of the limited edition colours and I've sold out of that and um, that no longer exists. The contrast colour I did was Confide in Me, which is that colour. Um, but if you were wanting to do it, I really love this colour and it's called Black Gold in the Sun and I did sell out of this colour and I've just recently got a new order in. Um, isn't it beautiful? You can see the fleck, flecks of gold in it. So it's 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 a black that's not a black. Um, but yeah, I've done that in yarn italic, and this is beautiful, soft to the skin yarn. Um, I don't have anything under this except a bra, 
um, there's no itch factor at all. It's really, really um, soft to the skin. So, um, yes, that's what I'm wearing. I am surrounded by stuff here. You wouldn't believe how much stuff I've got laying around. I hope I can stay focused and work through my list. I hope I don't go jumping all over the place. Um, it's only my second coffee, so I'm doing well. I love these pottery mugs. And what I do is I turn my coffee machine on and while I'm waiting for the coffee machine to heat up, I put hot water in here and put it in the microwave for a minute um, and it heats the glass, it heats the, the glass, the ceramic, and it holds the heat and it keeps my coffee warm for like an hour. It's really good. My tip for the day. <laughs> mm. So that's what I'm wearing. Okay, so now I'm going to talk to you about my FO. And I'm pretty excited to have this off the needles. I finished it last night, so it hasn't been washed and blocked. Um, my plan is to do that today, although it's really grey here today. It's actually really warm and humid, but I think we're going to get a lot of rain. So I might not block it today. But it's the Sprite by Dre Renee Knits, which is Andrea Maori. That's it there. Um, I cast this on on the 23rd of January. Um, so I have knitted it up quite quickly. Um, I did have some gauge issues, um, which I've talked about in previous podcasts. But like all patterns, you just got to keep doing gauge swatches until you finally get gauge, <laughs> just work it out. Um, but so this is my finished object. And I just love it. Love that lace work. Once again, it's got bobbles, which I love. The corrugated rib I've never done before. Um, and I really enjoyed that. And I'll talk to you about that. It's the corrugated ribs on the band and on the sleeves. Now, I, the yarn I used again is Yarn Adalic, um, which is what this is. And the colorway I used is Ordinary Joe for the main color, which is like an undyed color. And my contrast color is called Wondrous Place. I love this contrast color. And it was actually this color that made me want to knit this jersey. I didn't feel like I could wear a jersey completely in this color, but I wanted to incorporate, incorporate it into a bit of color work. Um, so that's Wondrous Place. Now I used three skeins of the main color, which is 300 grams, and that's what I have left. And I haven't weighed it, but it's not much. And the Wondrous Place, I've got lots left. So I'm actually gonna put this aside and do a beanie. Um, I've definitely got enough there to do a wee beanie, so it, that won't go to waste, but that's what I have left. Um, so what I wanted to say about this jersey, the corrugated rib, um, I had to remind myself that it's like any colour work and you have to um, carry floats at the back and not to go too tight. Um, because I was sort of knitting away and I'm sort of, in my mind it was, it's rib, so ribs meant to be a bit sort of tight. Um, but you have to allow for stretch when you carry those floats at the back. And the reason I say that is because I have done my cuffs a bit tighter than I'm comfortable with. So I often say with sleeves, um, I get this tip from Andrea Maori is to go up half a needle size when you knit your sleeves, because we tend to knit tighter in smaller circumferences. And that's what I've done here on these sleeves. Um, there's not a lot of stretch in them. I didn't allow much room when I carried those floats, but I'm okay with it because it goes over my hand okay and it sits okay around my wrist. Um, but if you do do this corrugated rib, just be conscious um, to allow a bit of stretch when you carry your floats. And the only modification if you'd call it a modification that I did on this was my ribbing on the cuff and on the bottom band 
um, is longer than the pattern. So I think the pattern recalled, called for six centimeters and I've done quite a bit more than that. And the reason is because I wanted a bit more of this color. I really wanted it to be quite a big contrast color and not just a little pop. Um, so I did the cuffs and the bottom band um, the same length which is quite a bit longer than the neck, than the collar. So that's what I did. And like I said, my reasoning was because I really did want more of this contrast colour um, in this garment. The fit is perfect. Um, I tried it on last night and I'm really, really happy with the fit. And I know that once I block that out, that it's just going to sit beautifully. So I'll probably have this, well, I will definitely have this washed and blocked and I may wear it on my next podcast, unless it's terribly hot and then I won't. <laughs> um, but that's my finished object and I'm really, really happy with it. Oh, there was one other modification. So on the bind off, um, on the cuffs and the bottom, Andrea calls to do a tubular bind off. And that's where you have to rearrange your two by two rib back to one by one rib. And then you do, which is almost like a Kitchener stitch bind off using um, a needle and the wool. And when I was casting off my first sleeve, it was, it was late at night and I just, I just didn't want to. I just, I just thought it was too hard. I'd have to read tutorials and I just wasn't in the right headspace to do a tubular bind off. And I hoped that I wouldn't regret that decision and I haven't. But what I did is my, a bind off that I do a lot where I just, after my two by two rib, I knit one round and then I bind off in knit. And I'm actually really happy with that bind off. See it there. See that really nice neat knit line um so i don't think um i'll regret not doing the tubular bind off i, I kind of feel like i cheated a little bit and i was really just being a bit lazy but that's okay i'm happy with it it's all good so that's um a finished object and yeah, I'm really happy with it. I know I'll get wear out of it. Um, I love doing it and I love the yarn. So, um, yeah, it's a big tick. Big tick from me. Um, and now I'm going to talk about some new cast-ons that I did. I have three new cast-ons, um, all of which I did talk about in my, la my last podcast because I talked about the patterns and said there were things that I wanted to do. And I've cast them on, so um, I'm just going to get the first one because they're down on the floor. So, okay, I am going to sidetrack a little bit before I go into my whips. Um, so, what I want to talk about is, is this jersey that I knitted about a year ago, and it's called Fiola or Fajola by Isabel Kramer. That's it there. If you've been following me for a while, you might remember it. Um, love it, love that lace work all the way from the shoulder down to the cuffs, the lace work across the top and the rest is really basic stock and stockinette stitch. Um, now I knitted this in, it's a bit of a woolly wool. Um, for some people they may find this quite a scratchy wool. Um, I don't overly, but I'd probably wear a camisole under it if I did. But when I finish this, have a look at this lace work, it's just beautiful. And I chose this yarn for the stitch definition. And I can't remember, I bought it in a cone from the Woolly Thistle. And I think it's what they call a Guernsey yarn. So it is very much for outerwear, but I don't mind. I love it. Um, love that stitch definition. See that there. Um, so I finished it, I blocked it, and it never sat right. It kind of done this real puckering thing. It kind of had a real fold across the top here and the shoulders and the sleeves kind of puckered and it didn't sit right. And I didn't know what to do about it. And it, I kind of didn't know what to do about it, but it's, it has sat on my shelf for about a year and I think I've worn it once. And when I wore it, 
I remembered why I hadn't wore it because it didn't sit right. Well, I got this out, yes, the day before, and I was thinking about my podcast today and I thought I might wear it and then realised why I hadn't been wearing it. So I blocked it again. I soaked it for about six hours in very hot water and I pinned it out onto my mats and I reshaped it into a shape of another raglan sweater that I have that I do really like to wear. So I completely changed the shape of it and I'm not going to put it on, but it's worked. It's, um, it's still a little bit tight around the top of the sleeves and there's a wee bit of gathering at the top. But I don't think I can really change that. I think that would have meant going up another needle size when I did the sleeves. But that's okay. Um, but this part of it actually sits quite nicely on me now and I'm really happy with that. So um, next podcast, we're in autumn now so the weather is going to start cooling down. Um, and I will wear this and show it to you. Um, but I wanted to share that with you because because you may have a jersey similar that you're just not happy with the way it sits on your body and it's just a matter of soaking it in hot water and re-blocking it and changing the shape a little bit maybe stretching it out or pushing it in changing the shape so that's what i did with um with that jersey my fajola by isabel kramer um i wanted to share that with you and the other thing I wanted to share with you, because it does relate a little bit to Sprite, the one of my, my finished object. So, and what reminds me of this is one of the ladies that visited me from the North Island, she had mentioned that she's done quite a few jerseys and she always seems to get the length in the body wrong and they're quite often too short and she has to go back and add length. Now that's happened to me um, more than once and actually this top is a perfect example where it is a little bit shorter than I would have liked. And I gave that quite a bit of thought and I come up with the conclusion. <laughs> so a lot of my jerseys I knit from the top down. I put them on cables often and try them on as I go. So it was like, well, why don't they fit? Why are they too short? Why is it that when after I've blocked them and I start wearing them, I have this little bit of regret that I didn't do them a bit longer when I had tried them on as I went? And what I, the conclusion that I've come up with is, is when I try them on, I stand in front of the mirror and I try them on and I think, yep, that looks good. But I don't actually move around or lift my arms or bend or sit and stand. And I, and I really think that is the answer. I think when we're trying them on to establish the length, that we should try them on and actually sit, sit stand, stretch, move, lift our arms up and down and then decide whether it's long enough. Because I think that's what I do. I think I look in the mirror and I think, yes, that looks good. And then when it comes to actually wearing it, it's too short. So with the Sprite that I've just finished, it's exactly what I did. I tried it on, I put it on stitch on hold cables and I actually sat down and stood up and sat down and stood up and I moved around. And I actually decided that I still needed probably another three inches of length. And that's made a really big difference to that jersey. And had I not done that, I think I would have done it too short. So that's my other tip for the day, is move around before you decide whether it's the right length. Um, and it was really interesting hearing that from somebody else, that they find that they do that often, but quite often their garments are too short um, in the body. Um, I just wanted to recap, actually, why did I want to recap? I know why, because I've got some new yarn. So this is another one that I wear quite a lot. I've really got quite a bit of wear out of this since I did it. And it's the Cumulus Tea by Petite Knits. Um, and I did this in an Exmoor sock yarn. But I thought I would just show you this because I think this would be a really good stash buster. Um, it's very, it's a very size inclusive pattern, but being short sleeved, I think that's why I wanted to get it out. Um, 
yeah, have a look at the pattern. But if you've got a couple of four ply fingering weight skeins in your stash, um, I think this is a really nice wearable t-shirt. I think that's all I needed to say on that. Um, the other one I want, wanted to mention, and again, because I think it's a really good stash buster, hanging behind me there is my Stripes by Andrea Maori. Um, I knitted that a couple of years ago, literally out of stash. Um, I had quite a lot of colours of the same brand of yarn, um, and I put them together, and I love that jersey. I love the way it fits. I love the colours. I'm not a fan of the yarn. It's really fluffy and pilly, which um, which I'm not a fan of, but I really do love the pattern. And I recently saw a podcast with Selma from Little Big Knits, and she was wearing a, one of her, I think she's done more than one stripes, but she did it out of stash as well. And I think it's one of those jerseys that you can put colours together that you may not normally put together and they just work well. Um, what I had in my stash, I'm going to show it to you in this bucket. It's a glass bucket. But this is all high twist fingering weight yarn and I've got, it's clear. I've kind of got one skein of a whole lot of colours and they're colours that I wouldn't normally think to put together but I actually am going to put them together and I'm going to do another stripes um, I'm going to do another stripes jersey 100% out of stash so yeah I think that's all I wanted to say about those patterns. For some reason, they were on my radar and I thought, no, I really should talk to you about them um, because I know, I know that most of you out there are like me and I know that we all have stashes that are really, really precious and there's some really amazing yarn in them. So, and I know that all of us want to use our stash yarn. So I think that's just all I had to say about those ones. So I'm going to get on to my whips because I did I get a bit sidetracked there. Okay. Amika here knits. I've talked about this on a couple of my podcasts. Um, Eliza, Elizabeth from Amika here knits um, is local to the Canterbury area where I live here. Um, and she's designed some really lovely patterns. So jump onto Ravelry and have a look. Now this cardigan, it doesn't show up very well, but there's a lace panel across the top. And then on the but button band, there's also lace. And she's done this in a high twist fingering weight yarn. Now, in my last podcast, I showed you that I had done a swatch with this yarn um, that I have in my shop. It's called Volcanic and it's a high twist New Zealand Merino. And it, it does have yellow and gold in it. And normally I can't wear yellow or gold, but I did a swatch in this and I decided that I could wear this color. Um, and I, and I really liked it. And I'm going to show you there too. These two skeins are quite different, although they're the same which is why I want to say always alternate your skeins when you use an indie dyed yarn because that's what I'm doing here I'm alternating my skeins now I cast this on about a week ago and I'm hoping it's going to show up oh it is so you can see that lace work there's a really interesting um, pattern in there that I've never done before yeah it's showing up really nicely so that lace work goes around the top and then here on the button band she's continued that pattern that's going to go down the whole length of the button band um, and I'm actually really excited to get this done as a lightweight cardigan as a layering piece so at the moment I'm doing the raglan there's raglan um, increases all the way down which is what I'm working on here. And I've got a bit more to do before I actually divide for the sleeves. 
um, and I'm really enjoying it. I I love the lace work. I find it really addictive, but I also love this sort of pattern that involves lace work and increasing. But then you just get to this, you know, you see uh, what's it called? Like the home run where it's just stockinette stitch all the way down and it becomes easy, comfortable TV knitting. So I'm nearly at that stage. Um, next week, late next week, my husband and I head away um, down south again for um, a running event that he um, has done. And it's a whole weekend. Um, it's 100 miles. Um, so he does a lot of running and I do a lot of knitting. So I'm really, um, my plan is to get this divided for the sleeves to the point where it's just stockinette stitch and I'm going to take that away with me. And I'm going to work on that um, while he goes and runs up lots of hills. <laughs> it's crazy. This, act this event that he actually does, over 100 miles, the elevation, the climb, is 9,000 metres which is the same climb as Everest. So this is actually his Everest. But of course you haven't got the, uh, the um, what do they call it? When you, the altitude and you don't have all those things to deal with, but it, it's quite a big event. He's got injury as well. So he has prepared me that he might not, he might not get it finished. But anyway, that's his thing. I sit in it and he goes right in. Um, so that's my plan is to take that away next week and work on the body. So that's my first new cast on and whip. The next one So once again I've showed you this pattern. It's called the Agnet Agneti Cardigan by Petite Knits. Now she's done this in fingering weight held together with mohair. Um which I'm a fan of. I, I, I do actually really like um, double strand in mohair. There's a picture of the back of it. So this is single colour brioche. Now, I haven't had much luck with brioche. But in saying that, I wish somebody had said to me, do one colour brioche first. Because now I've got my head around brioche doing one colour that I really think think that transitioning into two color brioche will be a whole lot easier. So I am really excited to get this done because then I think it's gonna give me confidence to go on and do um, two color brioche. So I cast this pattern on a few weeks ago and my gauge was way too tight. I may have showed it to you. Um, I had done quite a big section and I had to pull it all back and it was my own fault because I didn't swatch. And when I took it to a knit group, and my friend's doing the same pattern, and she just looked at it and she said, no, Lucy, you're way off. So I pulled it all back, but then I also realised that I actually wasn't going to have enough yarn in that particular um, colour that I had to finish it because brioche takes up a lot of yarn. Um, so I had to start again, right back to the drawing board. And I knew that what I wanted was um, quite a sort of round rounded soft merino which i don't have here so i had to go and buy some um and i come across this yarn and what drew me to this is once again it's local to my region it's um farmed here in canterbury it's milled here at wild earth yarns which is here in christchurch um and it's called the grumpy merino it's it there i hadn't heard of this brand and I should have because it's so lo local but it's a really what did she say to me I bought this out at Rangiora yarn store so that's where you can get it Rangiora wool shop very high microns and that's it's so soft you wouldn't believe how soft it is and she's only got three colors which is a navy a pink and the natural color and I've never been a fan of navy because it actually reminds me of school uniforms. <laughs> but I also think that there's a place in my wardrobe for a good classic um, navy cardigan to wear with jeans and a, just a white shirt. And I don't know if you can see that. It's a really, I don't know, what's a beautiful navy? I don't, it's a, 
I think it's a beautiful navy. It doesn't remind me of school uniforms. So I have bought enough of this yarn. She's actually, I've, I'm lay buying it. So I'm just going in and buying two balls a week. And I started from scratch with my Agneti cardigan in one color brioche. Now, what I'll say about this is um, I did have gauge issues once again. So this band um, is double knit. It's not showing up that well, is it? It's like a cylinder, the whole thing. I can put my finger in it. I, I've not done much of this double knit, but it's it's a beautiful band. Um, and you do, I think it's 46 rows, which should measure X. I did 23 halfway, measured it, and I knew that I was going to be way off. My band was going to be longer than it should have been. So I had to go down a needle size for the band and then up a needle size for the actual body of the brioche. So when I say I had to go down a size for the band on their recommended needle size and up a needle size for the body by their needle size. The needle size in the pattern um well worth it um i'm glad i persevered i'm glad i pulled the other one out um because i really think this is going to be beautiful and it's so soft and i can actually just picture this over a white shirt and a pair of jeans just a real classic look um and i'm really excited to get it done i have actually stopped at this point that's actually the back the back neck and i'm going down down to the shoulders and I've stopped because it's at this point that I have to just decide what color oops, sorry it's at this point that I have to decide what size I'm gonna knit and I haven't quite decided whether I want it to fit with not much positive ease or whether I actually want it a little bit oversized and slouchy so I need to make that decision really soon because I can't go on without working out what size I want to knit. So that's why I've stopped and that's where I'm at and I'm loving it. And like I said, if you like me have been a little bit scared or intimidated by brioche, my advice is to follow this pattern. I'm following it. Um, and it's really quite clear. Her instructions are really quite clear. And I can't believe it's so easy. Um, yeah, so I think I'm going to, I think brioche is going to come into my life <laughs> after I finish this. Um, it's almost like a light bulb moment. I, I sort of started working through the rows following the pattern and it was like a light bulb moment that I thought, I get this now. I get it. And I know that to do two colour brioche means that you pearl. But it's the same. Like I, I think I can I think I can move on with brioche. I feel like I'm rambling now. Um I don't mean to ram I don't mean to ramble. I try I've got a list in front of me and I try to stay focused. Um but Not to worry. My next whip and new cast on is the Robin Beanie. This is by Sari Nordland. And this is done, you can either do this in a DK or a fingering weight held together with mohair. Um, both work. So I've chosen for this one to do um, a DK. I spoke about this in my last um podcast because what I've actually done is I have dived into my stash and I've pulled out quite a bit of DK yarn and I'm going to do quite a few of these beanies for gift knitting and I'm going to put them aside um, for Christmas and towards the end of the year because I like the pattern I think it's um, really good for his and hers it's a really basic warm beanie um, but what appealed to me about this pattern and it's quite different I've never done it before but you actually start at the top and work down. Um, so you do the crown first, do your series of increases, and then it's just two by two rib. Um, so it becomes really easy knit group knitting or TV knitting. Now I did this cast on and the crown in just one night. 
um, might have been two rugby games worth. My husband was worth it watching rugby, so I sat there and knitted. Now, what you do with this cast on is um, I'm going to leave the link for the tutorial that I used. Now, let me just go to my page. So, it's a circular cast on. And what you do is you, you cast on your stitches and then you get your yarn and you draw it in like a drawstring. And I thought this was really quite clever. Now, there are quite a few tutorials on YouTube and I looked at a few of them. And the one I went with is called the Pinhole Cast On by Pearl Together. I'm going to leave the link because I looked at three or four of them and I went back to this one because I thought it was the clearest. And what you do is you create a loop just by hanging on to two bits of yarn and you knit into that loop. And then at the end, you get your tail and you draw it in. But what I wanna say is when I first did it, I followed the tutorial really closely and I didn't have a very big loop because in the tutorial, she only cast on nine stitches, but in the pattern, you have to cast on 32 stitches. So that's just my little um, tip there is when you do cast this on, allow a longer loop because you're casting on 32 stitches not nine um and then i can i still should be able to pull that a bit tighter and close that in a bit more she does also say yeah you can see there so i've actually just closed that in quite a lot she does say if you're using a yarn that's fragile or may break easy to actually use a bit of nylon or sock yarn for your cast on because you really have to pull that quite tightly to close that and if it's a soft fragile yarn it's going to snap so um yeah so i'm going to see if i can show you this without losing my stitches it's just a series of um make one right and make one left increases really basic pattern to follow and now and there's quite a lot of stretch in that if you're wondering that it looks quite small, there is a real lot of stretch in that. And now I'm just going to knit, knit two pearl, two rib all the way until I'm happy with the length. I can try it on as I, could, as I go. I can do a single brim beanie. I can do a double brim where you fold it twice for extra warmth. Um, and I can also do a beanie with no brim. Like, I, I've literally got a lot of freedom now just to take that away and knit to my heart's content um, and cast it off when I feel that I want to cast it off. So, like I said, I went through my stash and I've probably pulled out six skeins of Merino DK that I had in my stash. And I'm going to turn it all into these um, Robin Beanies because I really love this pattern and I really recommend it. Um, and I think it's going to be really good gift knitting and travel knitting. And I've not done a lot of beanies. I've done a few sort of really intricate, intricate, is that the word? Um, Colour work beanies and berets. But I know my daughter and the daughter's boyfriend and some other um, men in men and boys in my life would really like this beanie so that's the robin beanie and i'm really happy with that so i've done my brioche cardigan my sky watch my beanie socks i've not made a lot of progress i finished i showed you this in the last podcast um this is the dkr drk i get that wrong I actually think I got it wrong in the last podcast. It's the DRK Everyday Sock by Andrea Mowry. And it's a two by two rib sock, toe up. And this is my second pair. And I've got to say, this is now my favorite sock pattern because the two by two rib um, really hugs the foot. I've done a lot of vanilla socks and I find that they end up quite saggy and baggy where I find this one um, does hug the foot a lot, a lot better. It's not tight, 
but it's not saggy and baggy. And I know a lot of you, um, my viewers, have messaged me and said that they've purchased this pattern and they're going to give it a go. Um, so I hope you enjoy it as much as I do. I have been, the first pair I did on a 2.5, I have gone down to a 2.25 um, because I want them a little bit firmer again. And I use um, Magic Loop. I use a 100 centimetre cable. Actually, I think this is the 120 and I'm not enjoying it. It's too long. Um, I normally use a 100 centimetre cable. And all I've done there is my, I think it's, what's it called? I want to say Russian cast on, no, Turkish cast on. It's a Turkish cast on and that's literally all I've done. But at least I've cast it on. This yarn um, is a New Zealand dyer and she's called Mrs Peacock's Yarns and she's based in Auckland, up in the North Island. And she does some really beautiful self-striping yarn. Now, that's her logo there, Mrs. Peacock's Yarns. I'm going to leave you the link because she sells this yarn on her Etsy shop. And I'm not sure what that colorway is, but I think she is, um, I think she did say to me that she is redoing this colorway. I like, I'm, I'm actually going to give this one to my husband. Um, I think it's quite a nice colourway for men. I generally like brighter and colour, more, more colourful socks. Um, so she's redoing this colourway. But she has sent me this and this is stunning. This is so beautiful. And this is available now on her Etsy shop. And the colourway is called Posy. I think I've got that right posy and she winds it i think they, i think they call them gobstoppers you wouldn't even want to knit from this ball the ball is so beautifully wound i just love that i just think it's beautiful i love these colors these are very much um the sort of colors i would choose for a pair of socks and there's the contrast in pink for the heel toe and cuff now Cynthia has sent me this for a giveaway, so I am going to give it away, but I'm not going to give it away right now because I did my giveaway and now I've got this problem with a bot, bot, <laughs> which I really need to get sorted, but I am going to put this aside and after I have finished my original giveaway, I'm going to do another giveaway and I'm going to give away this beautiful ball of Posy self-striping sock yarn. It comes in this beautiful little drawstring bag. I just can't believe how beautiful it is with her logo on it. But you can purchase her yarns from Etsy, Mrs. Peacock's Yarns, and I'm going to leave the link in my show notes. And I won't be tempted to knit with this <laughs> as much as I love it. I am going to put it aside um, for a giveaway. So that's my DK uh, Everyday Socks in um, Mrs. Peacock's Yarns. I am not going to show you my Stephen West um, Cable Trellis Socks because I haven't made any more progress on them since I saw you um, in my last podcast. They are a sock that requires quite a lot of concentration and... As much as I've loved knitting for the last two weeks and I've finished my Sprite jersey and I've cast on some new projects, I haven't wanted to knit anything that's too intense, which is why I haven't done my Stephen West. He, his patterns, he just amazes me. I just, I love his talent. I love what he can do with colour. Um, and he actually inspires me. I showed you my container of all of that four-ply um yarn that I'm going to do a sprites jersey in the inspiration to do that actually come from seeing how he blends colors that you would never think go together but they end up just colorful and they work so it's actually seen a lot of what he does that is given me confidence to be a little bit more adventurous with color um 
So thank you, Stephen West, for that. Now, that's my whips. Ah. Also, this is a, from my last podcast. Alana from Black Cat Knitting Company, um, about a month ago, launched this pattern, the Calypso. And if you like a wee bit of colour work, jump onto Ravelry and have a look at this pattern. Now, the colour work in that she's used um, for the colour work yoke, she's used two skeins of spin cycle. So whether you have spin cycle or you don't, you could use any other contrast colour or self-striping yarn. And I had two skeins of spin cycle that I'm going to use, but my... Um, my decision was what was I going to do the main body in and last week what I'd said that is that I was going to go and buy the um the yarn that she recommends which is a commercial yarn let me find um Rowan felted tweed so that's what Alana has done the body of that jersey in, is Rowan Felter Tweed. And I haven't used Rowan Felter Tweed, and I've got friends that say it's beautiful, it's light, it's beautiful to work with, it's beautiful to wear. So I was going to go and buy some. And then I thought, well, that's just silly. I mean, I've literally got a yarn shop here, and I couldn't really justify it. So I started to lay my um, spin cycle yarn out and play with a few other colours. And I've come up with this as my truck, as my contrast colour. And it's from Yarnadelic, which, love, it's um, Yarnadelic, if I didn't mention before, it sits at a, a sports weight, five ply yarn. And this colour is called Barida. Barida, Barida, I think it's from a song. And... It's, I don't even know how to describe it, but you can see those flashes of blue in it, which I really like, and browns, and it's just, I, I did, I had two or three laid out that were possibilities, but the more I looked at this, it's what my eye kept being drawn to. So this is what I'm going to use, because in my spin cycle, there are little bits of blue, and I actually think it's going to work really well. They're two different spin cycles. I haven't got two the same and I'm not prepared to go and buy another one. So I'm going to start with one and fade it down into the lighter one. So I've made the decision. Badida is my main colour and I really want to cast this on because I also really want to do a colour work yoke. I haven't done one since this, probably. Um... And I am quite excited about that. And I am really quite excited about um, promoting another New Zealand designer. I think we're really quite, um, for such a small country with such a small population, um, for those of you sort of from the States and Canada that might not know much about New Zealand, our, our total population is only 5 million. And where I live here in Christchurch, which is actually the second biggest city, there's only about 400,000. So we're quite a small nation. So I do get quite excited about um, our yarn and our designers. Yeah. Now, what's next on my list? Calypso. Uh, I'm going to talk about, um, I've pulled out a couple of patterns and I've pulled out some yarn from my stash. And I want to um, talk to you about a couple of stash busting patterns. Okay. While I was just gathering my stuff, um, I'm sitting in front of my computer here. I just quickly checked an email from my IT people about this bot. And what she has said is that they target um, accounts using keywords like giveaway and competitions, um, which is exactly what's happened to me and other podcasters. And basically she's saying that there's not much we can do about it other than continue to block them um, as they appear. And for me to probably keep talking about it so as though you know what's real and what's not real. So the giveaway is real. It's a legit, a legit 100% um, giveaway. 
but the the link that says you have won contact us and download this link that's a scam just just delete report block do whatever you can and just know that i will contact you personally or i will tell you on this podcast who the winner is and you can email me um so there's a quick update on that it's still it makes me angry and it makes me a little bit sad because I think, why target us? Like, we're knitters. We just want to knit. We're not sort of spreading bad things or it's just knitting. Leave us alone. But anyway, it is what it is. Right. I I want to do a bit of stash busting. Um, and I... I did think about it and I reflected that I thought I can pretty much guarantee you that if you're sitting there knitting for an hour watching me talk about knitting, you're very much like me and you probably have the same um, stash, you have beautiful yarn, you have a big pattern collection and sometimes it's nice for someone just to remind us what we can do with that yarn or just to prompt us to go and have a look at our stash. So that's what I'm doing here. So this pattern um, has been in my folder for a while. I purchased it. It's a paid for pattern and it's I've printed it out. And it's called the Tegna um, by Boyland Knits. And it's, um, I'm pretty sure this one might be bottom up. But anyway, it's a summer t-shirt with some beautiful lace work down around the bottom. And you could wear that quite boxy and cropped, or you could definitely add quite a bit of length. Um, but I have quite a bit in my stash of like high twist, finger and weight, merino, um, and indie dyed yarn. And I think this pattern would be perfect in any um, indie dyed yarn. This is one that I've just pulled off my um, shelf, actually. It's called Caramel Toffee. But any of these um, sort of speckly, speckled yarns um, that I know that we all buy, we buy on impulse because they look so good and we don't really know what we're going to do with them. So that pattern, this is a 400 metre skein, which is pretty common for finger and weight yarn. And the, this pattern is really size inclusive. It goes from a 36 inch up to an 80 inch. And you can do this summer top in two to three skeins. Um, and I'm pretty sure that most of you have got two skeins in your stash <laughs> that you don't know what to do with. So um, that's why I wanted... Oh, look at that. It's come undone. Um, it's why I wanted to talk about that pattern is I think it's a really good stash buster. Um, and it's perfect for your indie dyed yarns. So that's Tegna, and I'm going to leave the link. I didn't say that when I started. I leave the links to everything in my show notes. So any patterns that I talk about, yarns that I talk about, um, links to podcasts or tutorials, you'll find them all in my show notes. So I will leave the link for that pattern. Um, and like I said, two skeins of your indie dyed yarn will knit up that pattern. Um, but I'll also leave the link to the yarn that I have put with it. The next one, the next two, um, I have talked about before because I really want to knit them up. Um, like I said, here in New Zealand, we are in autumn. Every, all the trees, I've got a lot of trees on my street. It's a very um, leafy street and they're all starting to go gold. Um so it's transitional season, right? doesn't matter where you are in the world. We're transitioning to either winter or summer. Um, and vests are really popular. So this is a vest by Elizabeth Smith Knits, and it's called the Alanis. And it's just a, a really beautiful boxy vest. You can't see it, but there is quite a little, quite a bit of um, sort of, not a lot, but there's a bit of detail down one panel. And I love that little pop of colour in the pocket. And I really want to knit this vest. So this is done in a DK yarn. Um, most DK yarns come in a 250 metre skein. And you can do this depending on your size in two to three skeins. I think I've worked out that I'll need three skeins. 
um, this color is called Oaken Pin and it's a limited edition color. Um, and I've probably got about 10 left, but it's never to be repeated. And I, I want to show you this because in here, can you see the yellow? And there's a bit of blue and green. From a distance, it looks like a bit of a neutral color, but there's a lot of color in it. Um, and three skeins of, this is Apple Door DK. Three skeins of this would do an Alanis. But if you've got about 750 meters in your stash of DK yarn, um, and you like a vest, you might like that one. Now this one, this one I can do in two skeins. So I've chosen this color, it's called Tom Putt. And it, once again, it's in the Apple Door DK. So this is another DK vest. Um, a vest dash waistcoat because it's actually got uh, it actually buttons up and I really really like this little waistcoat and I can see it in my wardrobe and I showed it to you on the last podcast because I want to show you the picture at the back um, so this is a paid for pattern by the way but you can see there the same vest in lots of different colors um, in lots of different sizes and I just think it's, I just love it. I just, I think what I love is the simplicity of it. It's just a really basic waistcoat and you don't see those very much. And I kind of think in the, in this color over a white shirt will just look stunning. And, and I really want to cast it on like today. <laughs> That's how much I, I want to do this. And I, and I think it'll be a really quick knit right because it's dk and it's just a little short waistcoat i i reckon if i had a weekend at home on my own i could knock that out in a weekend maybe not <laughs> um yeah so that's another i suppose on my to-do list but also um i think they are stash busters so I'm going to leave the links below to those patterns. Right, what have I got next? I have um, some new product to show you. So let me just check my book. So technically where I'm going now is a shop update um, with some new yarns and new colours. So I hope you stick with me um, and continue to sit back and knit and I hope you enjoy it but if it's not your thing and you don't like me talking about my shop um I get that as well and I just really appreciate that you've stayed with me up until now um so if you're going to leave thank you very much and I'll see you next time um but for you for those of you that want to hang around um I'm going to do a shop update first of all and this actually I suppose it's not really a shop update but I have changed some of my freight, um, one of my freight handlers. So what happened is Australia is a three hour flight from here. Like serious, it's like we're neighbors, but I've had parcels take four to five weeks to get delivered in Australia. Now it's not the freight company's fault because they're actually getting it to Australia in a couple of days. But Australia have a huge problem at the moment with staff shortages in customs and the parcels aren't getting cleared through customs and, and are taking four to five weeks to actually get cleared and then go out to delivery. So I am really, really sorry to all those customers that have in Australia that have had to wait four or five weeks. Um, it disappoints me and I really don't like bad service. Um, so I, I have spent quite a bit of time on researching alternatives. And so now for all my freight outside of New Zealand, I'm using DHL. What I have to say is, and I'm really sorry for, it's a little bit dearer. Um, it's not as cheap as um, New Zealand careers, but they're guaranteeing me two to three days from my door to your door. And the reason, how, the reason they can do this is, number one, they own their own planes that fly out of here daily over to Australia. Um, so the freight 
is in their ear the same day that it leaves my door. But they also have their own clearance, customs and clearance team. And most parcels are actually cleared through customs before the plane even lands. So all the paperwork's been scanned and entered and cleared before the plane lands. And it pretty well, um, from the plane, goes on to the van drivers and gets delivered. Um, and the other good thing is it doesn't matter where you are in Australia. So whether you're in Melbourne or whether you're over in Perth, um, it's the same cost. And it doesn't matter whether you are in a main city or whether you are rural delivery, same cost everywhere to Australia. Um, the only difference with rural is it may be a day extra. But seriously, three to four days max, not four to five weeks. That is just insane. Um, and it's the same to America and Canada. It's um, a couple of days as opposed to, in some cases, a couple of weeks. But it's a little bit dearer. So I do apologise for that. But for me, it's more about um, service like good customer service. And I know myself, if I get online and order something, it's because I want it. I don't wanna wait five weeks for it. So anyway, that's the update on my freight um, things. Within New Zealand, nothing has changed. It's really just for freight outside of New Zealand. I'm talking a lot today. Well, I talk a lot all podcasts, but anyway. I recently received an order from the UK from John Arbon Textiles. So I have updated um, and replenished some of my stock of Yana Dalek and Apple Door and Exmoor sock. But what I did um, order were these, um, uh, what are they called? Swatch cards, um, shade cards for each of the ranges. So there's a shade card for the Exmoor sock, the Apple Door DK and the Yana Dalek. Um, these aren't free. They cost $5.50. That is what they cost me. I've put no markup on those. I'm selling them to you purely as a service um, with no margin or profit. It's literally what it costs for me to get them here. So if you are wanting to do some knitting with some of these ranges, I think these are... I, I seriously, over the years... I wish I had access to some of these for some of the yarns that I've used. I think they just make selection so much easier. So those shade cards are available on my online store. Um, Exmoor Sock. Now, I love this yarn. So my Cumulus Tea that I showed you before, let me get it. So this t-shirt, my Cumulus Tea, is in Exmoor Sock. And in case you're wondering, sock yarn, oh, it's got nylon. It does only have 10% nylon, but it's so wearable. And this is my Pure Joy shawl. Um, and this is also done in Exmoor Sock. And I just love it. I love the stitch definition. I also sell these shawl cuffs, if you ever wondered or wanted to get hold of one of these. Um, I love these because it just makes it sit nicely without having a big thick knot. Um, but that is also done in Exmoor Sock. Now, there are now, I have now in stock 17 colours in that range, but they have just brought out four new colours. And I want to show you those four new colours. I have been posting these on my social media, but there's now a red, which is called Peggles. Show you that. Peggles. The blue is called Plashes. Don't ask me how they come up with the colours. It's a beautiful blue. Um, this one, it's like a khaki, but they call it Fuzz Pig. <laughs> but it's very much a khaki colour. And the pink is called Fairy Thimble. And I really like this pink it there but what they did is um they come up with some combinations that i've put on my website if you are tempted to do some stripes but look at these three together i'm going to leave these combinations on my um show notes um they are, they are on my instagram and my social media um because i think that's just stunning the other color combination that they did 
Was it those three? It was these three blues. Um, Mackerel Sky, Dimity, and the Peggles. It's like more of a green, but they just work so well together. This combination just blew my mind, but I can just, I, I can just say it. Those three colours. And the last one for those of you that like things really earthy are those three. So anyway, they're the new colours and a few combinations of um, the Exmoor Sock. And in case you have missed it, I will just tell you. Exmoor Sock. So it's 60% Exmoor Blue Face. 20% Corridale, 10% Zorbals, which are all different breeds of sheep, and only 10% Nylon. It is a super wash and it's machine washable, but it doesn't have that super wash feel. It's uh, It feels like a woolly wool and it has got, it's not that shiny sheen that you get in a lot of super washes. It does, it has a bit of a halo to it, a bit of fluff. Um but really wearable. It's a really, really beautiful, versatile yarn. So that is my shop update on the new colours in Exmoor Sock. And you must try it. Like, I seriously am really, really happy with um, how it wears and washes. And the other thing, so my bags, my leather project bags. Now, I designed this, so... I don't know what to say about it. And what I love about it is these drawstrings. I've shown you these before, but this is um, the project bag in the tan. So it's got two big outside pockets, which will hold a phone and keys and whatnot. It's got a big pocket there. It, it holds a lot. Um, I don't know if you can see that inside of it, but that's a really big bag. There are pockets on the inside and the fabric on the inside is called Shui Shui cotton and it's the fat. So these are made in South Africa. This fabric is traditional, um, traditional fabric, very strong cotton that traditional is traditionally worn by the South African, um, I suppose you'd call them indigenous people or the native people. It's what, their costume what they wear is made from I have um there's one lady who has help from another three I think her daughter's involved but basically what we're doing is providing an income to three or four ladies um in South Africa and that sits really well with me it's they live in a small town outside of one of the cities and I think times are pretty tough over there at the moment. Um, so it really sits well with me um, how we get these bags and how they're being made. A lot of the stitching is done by hand by these ladies. So it's not a big commercial setup. It is a really small one-man band, basically, um, that we are supporting with these bags. So I, I sold out of these because Inga from Knitting Traditions... Um, promoted them for me and I just sold out and it went crazy but I have restocked in the black and the tan the other thing I'm only going to give you a glimpse of because I haven't got any but they're coming so I have designed a new bucket bag this has a really big base and this is going to come out in four different colors I think I've got four there's um, a light blue like an apricot colour, a pink, purple and the green. So there may be five. Um, the lining is that same cotton that I talked about, the Shui Shui fabric. Loads of pockets, very big, deep pockets. And this leather is, I don't even know if you can see it, it's really thick leather. It's, these will last you a lifetime. And these are, going, these are going to come in to me in the next few weeks. And they're going to sell for around $200, which is the same as the project bags. But these are big. And these are beautiful. 
and I am so, so excited about these bags. I will keep you up to date when I know more about their arrival time. And I've only seen some swatches of the other colours. Um, this green is the only colour that I have seen completed. Um, the other colours, actually, here they are here. The other colours I've only seen in swatches. So that's one of the colours. It's a coral. I think I said apricot. There's the blue and the green. There's blue, green, apricot. And then I think there's a bright pink and a purple. Um, and this is really thick, beautifully thick, good quality leather um, with hand stitching. So um, I, I just, I'm so excited. And I'm also gonna have some of these made, um, which is just a little notions pouch. And I'm hoping to have some made in each color. So with each bag, um, you can, get this little notions pouch to go with it. How exciting is that? Like, I am seriously so excited because, like I said, I, I'm a one-man band. It's just me in my little room here at home um, who has spent a lot of time communicating with this one lady who has gathered, a, she's very talented with her leather making, but she's gathered a couple of her friends and her daughter to help her produce these bags for me. So we're a really small, tiny little operation um, and it really excites me. And I think these bags are affordable. Um, $200 is a lot of money, but not for a bag that you're gonna use forever. Like, it's really exciting. So, um, yeah, continue to follow me on Instagram where I'll give you updates. And if you're really interested and you want to pre-order, just send me an email. All my contact details are on my website, um, A Mind to Knit With Me. My online store is also a mind to knit com, And I'm checking my list. This colour keeps... Um, out of the corner of my eye. This is a colour that I keep seeing and it's called Omnibod. Have a look at that. What I will show you, where is it? Here, thinking of that. My friend Stripes by Andrea Mowry that's in the background that I was talking about, she knitted it up in this Exmoor sock um, and I've got the swatch and that's the swatch um, that she did. Her stripes, of course, were bigger than that. That's literally just a swatch. Um, but those colours are from that Exmoor range. And when she wears it, it looks great on her. But she has said to me for a few times, it's it's a really nice wearable garment. Um, so, yes, that's that. Um, I think I'm done and dusted. I once again want to thank you. Thank you for um, sticking with me and supporting my podcast and my social media and my online store. Um, I'm really sorry about the bots that you are receiving in regards to my giveaway, but I just do want to assure you that that giveaway is real. It's not a scam. It's, it's for real. But please, if you know how to, if you click on that message, you're given the option to report it. And as soon as you report it, it automatically blocks it. And I think that's all we can do is continue to block them and report them. And just know that when I draw um, the prize, I will announce it on here on my podcast and I will um, notify you directly or you can email me and, and, and get in contact with me. So please ignore those links. Once again, all my show notes um, should be down below. If you want to refer to anything, feel free to reach out, leave messages um, or email me. I do get back to everybody. And um, yeah, we're getting really close to the 2,000 subscribers, which I'm really excited about. So I've been going nearly, I think, July. Late July is my two-year um, anniversary for podcasting. And, and we're around 2,000 subscribers. So I think that's really neat. Um, it's also why I wanted to do that giveaway because I thought I'm nearly there and it could 
by the time I draw it, I'm hope I'm hoping to have two thousand subscribers. So it can be um, a celebration for that as well as a celebration for my birthday. And and I will just mention that I think I've got my family on board, and I think they're all going to put in and buy me um, the Ashford Z spinner that I want. I think I talked about it in my last podcast. Um, so I may get an Ashford E spinner, which means I'll be able to spin more. Anyway, thank you. Thank you everyone for joining me today. Um, once again, please subscribe and I'll see you in about two weeks. Um, I hope everyone stays happy, healthy, and I hope you get lots of knitting done. And I encourage everyone to um, stash bust. Get into your stash and see what you can come up with. Okay, thank you everyone. Bye.